I invited my brother to come on this first flight because we we're closest friends. I wasn't even expecting him to say that he was going to be on the first flight. And then when he asked me to go along, I was just awestruck. You see the Earth from space. It changes you. It changes your relationship with this planet, with humanity. It's one Earth. Jeff Bezos and his brother are headed to the edge of space on Tuesday aboard the Blue Origin spaceship New Shepard. It comes just nine days after fellow billionaire Richard Branson completed his space flight, launching a new era of space tourism. Our transportation correspondent, Gio Benitez, has been tracking it all, and he joins us now. Good morning, Gio. Hey, Martha, good morning. This will be the first time that any human flies aboard the Blue Origin New Shepard, and no pilot will be on board. And we have liftoff. The billionaire space race is now truly underway. Last week, it was Richard Branson. This week, it's Amazon founder Jeff Bezos launching into space aboard his spaceship, the New Shepard. Go, New Shepard, go. Also launching to the edge of the atmosphere, his brother Mark, 82-year-old Wally Funk, who will become the oldest person in space, and now 18-year-old Oliver Damon, who will become the youngest, sharing his excitement in this video posted on Twitter. I am super excited to go to space and joining them on the flight. I've been dreaming about this all my life. The 11-minute flight aboard the completely autonomous spaceship will give them just three minutes of weightlessness at the edge of space, 62 miles from the Earth's surface. The new Shepard sits above the rocket that launches the passengers up to space, different than what we saw last week with Virgin Galactic spaceship. Fire. Fire. <laughs> which drops from a mothership 50,000 feet in the air and pilots help it finish its journey to space. Virgin Galactic has already sold 700 seats at a whopping $250,000 each. Branson telling me after his flight, he hopes this will eventually open space up to all. So Jeff Bezos intends to go a little bit farther than Branson did, 62 miles above the surface instead of 53. And we will be right there at that remote desert site in Van Horn, Texas, to cover this launch for you on Tuesday. Martha. We will all be watching. Gio Benitez, thanks very much for that. For more on the Blue Origin launch, let's bring in former NASA astronaut and mechanical engineering professor at Columbia University, Mike Massimino. It's great to see you this morning, Mike. This will be the first ever manned crew launch for Blue Origin. You have actually been inside Blue Origin. You're right. Very nice windows, but unlike Virgin Galactic space plane, Blue Origin uses an automated reusable rocket with no pilot on board. So the launch will look very different than Branson's, right? Uh, Martha, absolutely. And thanks very much for having me. It's great, uh, great to be here with you this morning. Uh, yeah, much, much different than what we saw last week. It's more of a traditional rocket launch, but it's fully automated. So the, 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 uh, the astronaut passengers get inside. There's no pilot on board. Uh, they, they launch automatically. It separates, brings them into space. It lands with a parachute. The rocket itself, the, the, uh, the, the rocket stage will come back and land just a couple miles away from where they launched. And then the, uh, the, the people who have experienced space flight, the astronauts will then land close by as well within a parachute inside of the capsule. So much different. I think it's uh, very safe. It's been tested 15 times and has a great escape system. And all of that works, as you said, all of that works automatically. You, you know, the ride for Branson and Bezos is, is no doubt thrilling. But I've got to ask, for an astronaut like you, who has spent more than 260 hours in space helping to upgrade a powerful telescope, what's the overall importance of these very brief rides to the edge of space? Well, I think in this case with uh, Blue Origin, it's really uh, st taking steps to open up space more and more and go further and further and explore and do some really exciting things, particularly with a private company like Blue Origin. As I said, they had 15 successful flights so far, including one that included uh, an experiment, a biomedical payload that some of my students at Columbia got to fly into space. And so I think it's going to be more research, more people going up in these suborbital flights, which will be uh, very exciting. But it's only the first step, I think, for what they want to do. Uh, they have another spaceship coming down the line, New Glenn, which is a more powerful rocket that can go into orbit and beyond. And they're also interested in being able to develop a lander for, for moon operations to go, go to the moon. 
So I think what we're seeing here is really just the beginning of what I think will be uh, years of a very exciting program. And, and, and Mike, you mentioned the moon. You've got Elon Musk who wants to go to Mars. If they succeed, what are the long-term benefits to humanity? Um, I think that uh, one, one thing that I think is here with, with these companies now being involved that NASA has wanted to do for decades, really since its inception, is be able to turn over some of what they've done in space to private enterprise so that it could help our economy, provide economic benefits. So now I think we're seeing some of that. And as the access to space increases, just like my students, if when I was a student, there'd be absolutely no way, even just a few years ago, for students to be able to fly something and experiment in space, and now they can. As the access to space becomes more prevalent, people can envision themselves going or what research they might do or what products they might develop or what, what they want to accomplish in space because now it's possible. So I think it's going to let people be creative to come up with things we can't even imagine that can be done in space travel. And I think overall what, what I think the space program has been about is looking at things from a different perspective. We've learned a lot about our planet. We have so much more to learn. We have so many important things to take care of here on our planet. But by going to space, looking back, trying to understand that environment, we answer some big questions that I think can only be answered by looking back at our planet and exploring in space. What we can do in zero gravity, what we can learn about our planet, where we came from, what else is out there, I think that requires us leaving. And I think that's what this is, in a big picture, what this is all about. Thanks so much, Mike. I always love your perspective. We'll all be watching. We'll have live coverage of the Blue Origin Space Launch Tuesday morning right here on ABC. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.